Good morning, my friends. How's everybody doing? Today I thought it would be fun to do a Q&A for a couple reasons that I'm about to explain while I do my hair. Um, I've got my computer so I can go back and look at the questions that I asked. I didn't write them down so I'm gonna go, I'm just gonna go find them. Last time I did it, it was fun. So we're gonna do that. Okay, let me first update you guys on my life for the last couple days. I'm gonna draw attention to my puffy face. Not sure that you guys can tell, but I can tell. You know when you have like a little sore in your mouth or whatever and you're like feeling around for it and it feels so big in your mouth, but it's really not that big? That's what I'm feeling right now. I'll explain. Thursday, I had a root canal. If you've been watching and keeping up, I went in for a consultation and I walked out having a root canal. And Thursday, I was fine on Thursday, right? The procedure itself wasn't bad. I didn't really feel anything. Even the shot to numb my mouth wasn't too bad. And on Friday, I was feeling pretty good too. It was throbbing a little bit and it was annoying me a little bit. But other than that, I was like, I went over to Jules's house. We hung out. Everything was fine. I was like, oh, this, it hurts. It's annoying. It wasn't so bad. I couldn't go anywhere or couldn't do anything. It was just kind of throbbing and I would take some Tylenol and Motrin and it was fine. I even had a prescription that I tried to fill, long story, for like some heavier Motrin, you know, a higher dosage Motrin. And I ended up not getting that filled and I'm like, I don't think I'm going to need it. Would have been nice to have it in case I needed it, but the Tylenol and Advil were doing the trick. Okay, so that was Friday. And then Saturday, you guys, I woke up Saturday and it hurt. It was definitely hurting. So I was like Googling it and it literally had said 48 to 72 hours after is like the worst. Today's Monday. So Saturday and Sunday, it was, it was enough to like where I didn't want to get out of bed. It was like a sharp pain and I ended up going to um, fill the prescription because the regular over-the-counter stuff just wasn't doing it. It was, it was still hurting. I drove myself to pick up that prescription on Saturday afternoon, I guess. I don't even remember. I've lost all track of days. I really have not done anything for the last two days and I usually film on Sundays and yesterday I was like, I might. I was feeling a little better when I woke up Sunday morning. Maybe I will just film this Q&A later. I'll rest all day and then I'll get myself out of the bed and I'll probably feel like doing it later. No, I did not feel like doing it later. At one point I looked, took a nice relaxing bath. It was like the first time that I looked in the mirror and I still kind of see it. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see it, but my face over here was so swollen and it just looked so puffy and so droopy. And I was like, okay, I'm just, I'm not feeling great. I'm just going to take the day and relax and let the swelling go down a little bit. No big deal, right? No pressure, no stress. And so I woke up today feeling a lot better. Definitely feeling a whole lot better. I still took the medicine one for the swelling a little bit because I think that helps with the inflammation. I still feel it. It feels more like it felt Friday. Well, I think it even feels a little better than it felt Friday, which was very minimal. But I just feel like my smile's funny. Like it's still, I don't know how to explain it. Like I, I can still kind of feel it here. Of course, I was like Googling it and making sure that that was all normal. I remember the dentist telling me that day that the pain for the first couple days would be like moderate. I was starting to get a little worried because it was definitely moderate pain. It was pretty intense for a little while. I'm not going to lie. I mean, I don't deal with pain very well. I feel like I don't really have a high tolerance for pain. So I'm not surprised that it was hurting, that it felt as bad as it did. You know what? Let me get into the Q&A and we can talk more about my tooth later because I feel like there's more to say about it, but let's get to some good stuff while I finish doing my hair. There are more questions on here than I thought. Sorry, I'm having to go through them. Okay, my girl Amber asked, what's your favorite part of being back on YouTube and was there anything in particular that made you want to start up again? I think that's a pretty solid question. I think the, my favorite part, well, there's a couple things I feel like I can say to this. One is reconnecting with all of you. I think that's been really fun. I think that's been one of the best part to that is I've always enjoyed creating like content, right? Even though sometimes I think no one's gonna watch this, no one's gonna care. Not that they're not gonna care. You guys have always been so supportive and you deck guys do care. I've always loved photography and I've always loved making videos and I've always loved editing it. I think that, you know, I used to do them every day and I definitely, definitely got burned out doing them every day. That's why I don't think I'll go back to daily videos. I mean, never say never, but I don't have any intention of doing that right now. I just enjoy the whole process. It just gave it, it gave me a reason to be like, oh, let's go do something. Let's go enjoy life. Let's go have fun. And it was funny because Jules did learn that early on. She was like, it'll make a good video when she wanted to go do something. I feel like I'm rambling. I'm off track here. So I feel like 
starting up again has kind of given me that too. I remember times where it was like, oh, what am I going to do today? I'm really not doing anything today. Well, let's go to the, let's drive to the beach, drove to the beach by myself, or I would take myself out on dates. I feel like it just gets me going. There's days where I have plenty to do and, you know, more work stuff and more life stuff. And it's like, okay, that keeps me busy. But there, I did have a lot of downtime. What am I going to do? I don't want to just sit around all day. So for that's another favorite part. Then like the editing, I like that creative process of sitting down and making it. I do edit different than I used to edit. Sometimes I'll look back and be like, why did you not cut all that out? Not that it was bad or anything, but it was just, what was the point? I cut a lot more out. I don't know if that makes sense. Does that make sense? The boring parts. I cut a lot more of the unnecessary parts out. I kept a lot of that downtime in and that silence in, and now I don't keep a lot of the silence in. I feel like I'm still filming the same, just editing different, if that makes sense. That was a long-winded first part of the first question. She also asked, was there anything in particular that made you want to start again? When we first stopped, I always was in my head as like, this isn't forever, because I did enjoy it. I was just really burned out. Kind of knew that eventually I'd want to start again. I always imagined I'd come back. I didn't know what it was going to look like or how it was going to work out logistically or what it would mean. I've been thinking about it for a long time. I believe I had started my YouTube channel like a whole year before I started vlogging again and even before that it took me a while to even make that new YouTube channel but once I decided I was like oh, I might as well. I've been thinking about it even before then. Finally I was like I might as well just start the YouTube channel. It doesn't mean I have to start posting. So I'd say it was probably at least a year before that where it was like oh I'm thinking about it. I honestly think the podcast had a lot to do with it. If you didn't know I had a podcast with a friend. I feel like we had different visions on where we wanted it to go so we amicably you know parted ways but I do think that that was a big step because I, I knew that I, I'd always wanted to do a podcast number one and I knew I wanted to start on YouTube again so I think that was like I think the podcast was definitely a stepping stone of getting back out there. I'd wanted to come back to YouTube for a little while. I think the timing of the podcast did help with the timing of YouTube if that makes sense. I think that covers that question. Okay then another person asked about that podcast but I think I covered that a little bit. Again we just both have different ideas of where we want it to go and we just thought it would be better to kind of go off and do separate things. Would you ever consider moving to another state again? You guys. Yes, absolutely. Somebody asked me what my <laughs> my Roman Empire <laughs> is and I know it's usually about some somebody else or some other. Oh my gosh, I feel puffy. I think I feel like that's probably what they mean by Roman Empire. And I was like, I don't have a Roman Empire. I don't know what I think about things all the time, but I couldn't. I don't know what it is. Me moving to another state, I think that is my Roman Empire. I think about it all the time. I do think eventually it will happen. Almost like starting YouTube again. I, it's a, I think it's a thing that is eventually and inevitably going to happen, but I couldn't tell you when or where or why or how. I mean, may, maybe the why is because California is so expensive. Besides family and friends, there's really nothing holding me here, which those two are very important things. And that's probably why I'm still here because they are so important. Work's not bringing me here. Like I could work anywhere, like, you know, and I think about that all the time. I could live anywhere. I could literally live. And that's also the problem. I have, I have gone on Zillow. I have researched cities and countries and I've done all of that. And I think that I get overwhelmed because I literally could go anywhere, anywhere. And that's like, it's too much. I need to narrow it down and kind of decide, like really hone in on where I want to be long term. I don't know. I don't know. So yes, I would definitely consider moving to a different state. I consider it all the time. All the time. It is my Roman Empire. I'm glad I figured that out. And let's get to the next question. This is a good one. You had a household of five for many years and your life revolved around that. Now that it's only one other person living with you, how are you doing with that? Any major differences you've noticed? But mainly, I hope you're doing okay and hopefully you have more time for yourself. Okay, that's a, actually a really good question too. I do think about that a lot. And I think it's, <laughs> this might sound a little weird, but I think it's when I'm doing laundry. There was a time, oh, and I have another example too. There was a time where I was doing laundry. I was, I used to do laundry for five people. We had a household of five and I would do laundry for everybody in the house. I guess if you're new here on this channel, it's never been talked about. Most of you know, there's probably some people that don't know, but most of you know that my son Caleb passed away unexpectedly when he was 13. So I'm not trying to breeze over that. I'll talk about that in another video because I don't want to really breeze over it, but that's really not what this video is about. That would be a whole video on its own. I could talk about him for hours. So then I went, you know, doing laundry or packing suitcases for trips for four people. 
and then I got divorced. Then it was laundry for three people. And now my daughter Jules has moved out. So it's laundry for two people. Just definitely shows you how life can change. And it, it's not something that I'm like sitting in there folding laundry and crying, but it's definitely, it is definitely in the back of my head that that, what my, that is what my life is now, right? Like I went from this to this, but it's also a natural progression. Your kids do eventually grow up and move out and have lives of their own. You're not, you're not necessarily doing laundry for them. Like I'm not doing Jules's laundry anymore. And that's a, that's a natural progression. He said, how are you doing with that? I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. But I definitely do think about that. So the other major thing that I noticed um, when Caleb passed away was when we'd go to restaurants and be like, oh, a table for five, right? Like that was definitely something that was very noticeable. Katie, table for four instead of, you know, table for five. I'm also don't like, I'm okay. <laughs> I get like my, my smile a little funny. My, I feel like my expressions are a little off. It, it is a sad subject, but I am, I'm okay. I do like to talk about him all the time. Oh, this is an assumption. I did ask for assumptions, which I was a little nervous about, but assumption, I assume you always try to find the good in everything and keep positive, which I really admire. If you have any tips to keep that mindset in difficult times, hmm, tips? I don't know if I have any tips. I think I've always looked at the positive side of things. I think I've always looked at the glasses half full type thing. I mean, there's definitely times where I see the negative in people, like definitely. But I think for the most part, I think I'm just inherently a positive person. Um, I have my days, don't get me wrong, where it's like, oh, like the world is out to get me. And I just think that's kind of what keeps me going is if I looked at the world as a negative place, Ooh, like what would motivate me to like get up and have a good day? Like, I don't know. That's a tough one to answer. I don't think I have any tips. I'm going to think of one. Hold on. I guess one thing is the world can be a pretty negative place sometimes. And like there are bad people in the world and there are people that do things to you. But I've learned to try to not take things so personally. That's one thing I've learned recently. I used to take everything so personally, like it was in a person. Per I still work on it. I'm still having to work on it. But to not take things so personally. If someone's treating you badly, that is on them. It is. N it has nothing to do with me and who I am as a person or a reflection of me. That's on them. The outlook that I've had for years and years and years is I truly believe that there is more good in the world and that everybody is trying their best. I. That's all I would like for people. If you're trying your best, people are going to make mistakes and people are going to do bad things and they're going to have a bad day. I feel like in general from day to day I feel like most people are good and most people are trying their best there is an exception to that obviously there's always an exception to the rule there are bad people in the world and there are mean people in the world and there are cruel people in the world but I feel like there are is more there are more good people just trying to do the best that they are and sometimes you struggle in life and that can make people a little bit more mean and they sit behind their little computers and they're having a bad day and they're just I don't know my tip is just try to look for the good in people. Now, on the other hand is that if, I, I think I had this in my profile for a long time, when somebody shows you who they are, believe them the first time, you don't have to have those negative people in your life. You can set a boundary and only surround yourself with positive people that bring you up. I guess that is a tip. Surround yourself with positive people. If after spending some time with somebody, you walk away and you feel just gross and drained and you're just, you can set a boundary. It doesn't mean you have to like lash out at them. You can just not let them into your life as much. That's it. That's all I've got. That's all I've got on that subject. Someone asked, do you have any book recommendations? Well, yes, I do actually. Thank you for asking. I did just finish my friend Jane's new book. She's got a YA thriller out. Well, it's not out yet. I think it's out in sometime in mid-June, but you can pre-order it. It was so good. It's called A Lie for a Lie and I finished it I think I started it a couple days after she gave me and I finished it within a couple days. It was so good. There was definitely a twist at the ending and it was good and I definitely would recommend. It is a YA so I feel like my audience is mostly that age so I definitely recommend it to you guys. I enjoyed it so even if you're not you know under 25 I think I think everybody can enjoy it. Speaking of Jane this next question says how did you meet Jane? I met Jane on the set of Chicken Girls actually. Uh, her daughter Lilia had a part. I think Lilia was actually on total eclipse before she played a cheerleader autumn oh my gosh i remembered that and then she had a crossover on chicken girls for like a couple episodes so jane brought lilia to set and that's where we met but we didn't become close until the set of spring breakaway that's where i met will's mom anna's mom and got closer to 
Jane. We had a good time on that show. So that's where we, that's when we really started hanging out. And then like the rest is history. I spend holidays with her. Like she is my family here. Like that's where we go to Thanksgiving dinner. That's where we go to Christmas. We were just there for Easter, Mother's Day. It's where I go. I love her. Okay. Oh my gosh, this is a good question. You talk about watching Vanderpump. Have you watched The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills since they're kind of connected? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. That's where I heard about Vanderpump. I watched The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills and years ago and I binged it just like I'm binging Vanderpump. Maybe it was during COVID. It had to be before COVID or right, right during COVID. I think that's when I found it. And I got all the way caught up to whatever season was current and then I haven't watched it since. I think I'm gonna watch it again. I'm gonna catch back up after. I'm almost, you guys, I'm almost caught up with Vanderpump. I'm on season 10. Don't even get me started. Don't even get me started about Sandoval. Don't, and, and Little Miss Raquel. Not, not getting into it here. So I'm almost caught up with Vanderpump, but to answer yes, that's where I found Vanderpump. I'm enjoying Vanderpump. I, I enjoy reality TV. Like, that is one of my favorite genres. I do have a little bit of a headache, you guys. Like I, I can kind of still feel it. Do you prefer filming or being filmed? Cause you were kind of behind the camera and now you're in front, which do you prefer? I definitely still prefer to be behind the camera. I feel like that's it's definitely where my comfort zone is. Also, I feel like I'm better on the other side of the camera, like behind the camera. Does that make sense? Like I feel, I don't know. I just feel like I've, I did it for so many years. I would very rarely be on the other side of the camera. I'd pop in occasionally, but it was mostly like kind of my POV and my narrating. And like, I just, I do enjoy filming what like I'm seeing instead of the opposite way. But I'm definitely more comfortable now on this side but I still don't, I still don't love it. This distance of the camera, this is okay. So that's why I kind of use a tripod a lot. I like this, this little thing, my arms aren't long enough to get it this far away. But so I just, you know, I don't love, I don't love the selfie. Someone said, honestly, you feel like my mother and I love it. Not a question, but thank you because I hear that a lot and that it does mean a lot to me. I feel like you guys are all my, my little kids and you guys are all growing up and you're becoming wonderful humans. And I'm very proud of you guys. Ah, da, 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 da. You know what, you guys? I think that might be it. Thank you for asking all those wonderful questions. We'll do this again soon. Ask some more. Thank you so much for watching. I still feel like my... it kind of does hurt the smile too. So I'm kind of smiling through the pain. I mean, definitely the pain is definitely like a, a three. And my medicine's almost worn off. Oh, I was going to say about my root canal. I thought I had had a root canal on this tooth before and I was like, oh, now I have to have another one. But when she did the x-ray, she's like, no, there's, you have a crown on that tooth, but there's not a root canal. You haven't had a root canal on it. And I'm like, really? So the point to that is, is I did not look it up before because if I had looked it up before, I probably wouldn't have it done. So I really didn't know what a root canal was. I have since learned what it is. I did Google it and I'm glad I didn't know before because I probably wouldn't have done it. And then knowing that the pain was going to be like moderate for, you know, two or three days. So I'm glad I didn't know because apparently I've never had a root canal. I've always heard that they weren't fun, but I'm like, oh, I've had it. I was like, wasn't that bad? I don't remember it being that bad. It's because I haven't had one and it's not that bad but I think I would have just been a little bit more hesitant and I don't know. I don't know. So that's it for the Q and A for today. And I think that's going to be the whole video because I'm definitely not a hundred percent today. So I'm not going to film the rest of my day. I am glad that I got up I got showered and I got ready for the day because it was literally 48 hours where I did nothing. That's probably how I got to season 10 of Vanderpump so fast. Thanks for joining. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all other questions. And I love you all. I'm going to go take my medicine so that it helps with this puffy swelling that I don't even know if you can see. Oh, I can feel it and I can see it. I'm gonna go do that and I'm gonna clean up my house a little bit and I'm just gonna kind of take it easy. But I love you all and I'll see you next time.